Welcome to how to program and operate the ICOM ID888H amateur radio transceiver. This is a tutorial for new hams. Hams with a new to them radio, hams with an ICOM radio, or anyone interested in amateur radio. I'm Milt Reynolds, KJ7, PPX in Boise, Idaho, calling QST. The previous episode described three preference settings and two of the front panel control buttons. Number one, the menu button, and number two, the memory write button. Now let's continue to the front panel and look at the combined controls three and four, the tuning dial and the band mode button. The dial is used to select the operating frequency, memory channel, settings, and scanning directions. The center button of the dial may be tapped or long pressed to set the frequency band and operating mode. Here's how to dial a frequency in VFO mode. First, ensure that you are in VFO mode. Right now there is no MR indicated on the display, so it is in VFO mode. Tapping memory call places an MR showing that you are in memory recall mode. So, back to VFO, tap VFO, we're in VFO mode. The display shows no MR indication. So, in VFO mode, rotate the dial clockwise to increase the frequency. Rotate the dial counterclockwise to decrease the frequency. By default, each step of the dial changes the frequency by 5 kilohertz. This tuning step option can be changed in the settings menu. Here's how to rotate the dial to select a channel in channel mode. Tap memory call to select channel mode. The display indicates MR, memory recall. Rotate the dial clockwise to step through each assigned channel number. By default, only two channels are pre-assigned, channel 0 and channel 1. Continue to rotate the dial clockwise to step through the assigned scan edge channel numbers. By default, four scan edge channels are pre-assigned, 0A, 0B, and 1A and 1B. Tapping memory call repeatedly, cycles through two other types of channels. Tap memory call once to select call channel mode. Rotate the dial to select a call channel. Call channel mode provides two channels, call channel 0 and call channel 1. Call channels are typically reserved for making an initial contact with another station. If the contact must be maintained for more than just a minute or so, best practice is to mutually agree to move the conversation to a different amateur radio frequency in order to free up the calling frequency for other users. Tap memory call a second time to select weather channel. The weather channel frequencies are receive only for amateur radio operators. The ID 888 will not transmit on these frequencies. There are 10 weather channels pre-programmed by default. The National Weather Service broadcasts only on the first seven. These channels cannot be changed or deleted. Tap memory call a third time to return to channel mode, the display indicates MR, showing memory recall. The tuning dial has a center button that can be activated by tapping. It's labeled on the front panel as band slash mode, but I find it simpler to refer to it as dial, whether rotating, tapping, long pressing, or holding the control. Here's how to use the dial to select a band. Tap VFO to select VFO mode. In VFO mode, 
tap the dial to select band mode. Rotate the dial to view band options. Tap dial to select a band and the display automatically returns to VFO mode. Tapping the dial in memory channel mode displays a blinking channel number and temporarily locks the display. So tap memory call to select memory channel mode. The display indicates an MR, memory recall. Tap the dial. The display now indicates a blinking channel number and locks the display. While locked, only the menu, squelch, and volume controls are available. Tapping dial will unlock the display and all controls. The tuning dial is also used to change operating modes, whether in VFO mode or channel mode. Long press the dial to select an operating mode. Rotate the dial to step through the operating modes. Tap dial to select and exit the selection mode. And the display indicates the selected operating mode, in this case FM, frequency modulation. The other options are frequency modulation narrow, amplitude mod modulation, amplitude modulation narrow, and digital voice. Each of these operating modes will, will be explained later in this guide. For now, the transceiver should be set to FM. Button number five is the variable frequency operation button, VFO. VFO mode tunes the radio to specific frequencies. Tapping memory call selects channel mode. Tap VFO to select VFO mode. In VFO mode, the display does not indicate an MR above the channel number. Rotate the dial to tune the frequency. Another way of quickly dialing to a desired frequency is to tap VFO repeatedly. Tap once to dial in steps of 10 MHz. I'm going to dial to 1-4. Tap a second time to dial in steps of 1 MHz. Tap a third time to dial in steps of 100 kHz. Note. In VFO mode, the display shows the last accessed memory channel number, but that channel number does not change when the dial is rotated in VFO mode. The absence of MR in the display indicates VFO mode. Here's how to start scanning in VFO mode. Long press VFO to select scan mode. Rotate the dial to step through the options. And then tap VFO to start scanning. If, if a signal is detected, the scan will pause. After the pause, the scan will automatically resume. To manually resume scanning, Rotate the dial clockwise. Reverse the scan direction. 
by rotating the dial counterclockwise. Stop scanning by tapping VFO. In VFO mode, there are six different scan types available. All, Band, and P-Link. The transceiver is capable of creating 10 P-Link program link scans. P-Link 0 to P-Link 9. A P-Link program link scan allows linking together of individual program scans, which is the next option. By default, there are two programmed scans pre-assigned. Program 0 scans the frequencies between 144 and 148 MHz, and Program Scan 1 scans the frequencies between 430 and 450 MHz. Tap menu to exit the scan selection mode. There are two final scan options that appear only if the transceiver has been tuned to a duplex frequency with a tone. For demonstration purposes, here's how to configure a frequency as duplex with a tone. Rotate the dial to a typical repeater station. Uh, repeater stations transmit frequency. I'm going to suggest 145.130. Now long press low. The display indicates that the duplex mode is off for this frequency. Rotate the dial to select dupe negative, duplex mode, negative offset, and tap low to exit. Now, long press memory call. And rotate the dial to select tone. Tap memory call to exit. Now the display indicates 145.130 as a duplex frequency negative offset with a tone. That should now allow us to see two more options in the scan mode. So long press VFO to select scan selection mode and continue to rotate the dial to view dupe or tone as two different scan options and then tap menu to exit the scan selection mode. For now here's how to select start and stop each of these scan op options in VFO mode. First scanning all, scanning all frequencies. We'll tune to a starting frequency. I'm going to tune to 144 megahertz. So I'm in VFO mode. I know that because there's no MR showing above the channel mode. The display indicates the current six-digit frequency. I'm going to tap VFO to display the first two digits only and rotate the dial to select 14. It's already there. I'll tap VFO to display the first three digits and I'll dial in 144. Tap VFO a third time and dial to select 144.000. There's my selected frequency, 144 MHz. Next, we'll select, select the type of scan and begin scanning. So, long press VFO, dial to all, it's already there and tap VFO to start scanning. The display indicates rapid scanning of all frequencies above 144 MHz. Two meters, 
Scan will pause if a signal is detected. Rotate the dial to resume or reverse scan. If the squelch is set, it'll stop at each frequency. And tap VFO to halt the scan. Long press VFO. And then tap to resume scanning. Tapping the dial while scanning will change the frequency bands. There's a band starting at 230 megahertz, jumping to 325, 409, 500 megahertz, 990 megahertz, and back down to 129 or so. Tap VFO to stop the scan. Here's how to change the scan, pause, and resume timers while scanning. So I'll start the scan again. Tap menu. Dial to scan. It's already there. Tap money. Dial to pause. Tap money. Dial to pause time. I'm going to select something shorter, maybe 10 seconds. Tap money. Now we'll dial to resume. Tap money. And we'll shorten that up a bit. Tap money. And tap menu to resume scanning. and tap VFO to stop scanning. Setting the pause timer to hold causes the scan to pause until the signal ends. Setting the resume timer to hold causes the scan to pause even after the signal ends. Rotate the dial to resume scanning. Here's how to scan band, scanning within a selected frequency band. So let's tap the dial to select a band mode. I'm going to rotate to select a band and tap dial to confirm. Long press VFO. And this time dial to scan for band. Tap VFO to start scanning this the selected frequency band. We can tap the dial to change bands. And we can tap VFO to stop scanning. Scanning programmed scans, which scan specific programmed frequency ranges. A programmed scan specifies the start and end of a range of frequencies. Following an all reset, there are two programmed scans programmed by default. Program 0, 144 through 148 MHz, and Program 1, 430 through 450 MHz. Here's how to scan within a specific programmed scan. Long press VFO. This time dial to select a programmed scan number. Those are P-links, which are something different. Keep on going. There's program scan 0, program scan 1. I'll choose program scan 0. Tap VFO to start scanning. Starts at about 144 MHz. The display indicates a blinking program number. We're scanning right now through program scan 0. 
if we'd like to advance to the next program scan, program scan number one, tap dial. Notice the channel number changes. Now we're scanning program scan number one, which started at about 430 megahertz. And then tap VFO to stop scanning. Next, scanning P-Link, which are programmed link scans, scans linked programmed frequency ranges. A P-Link linked program scan specifies the starting end of program scans linked together. Following an all reset, there are 10 P-Link linked program scans programmed by default. P-Link 0 through P-Link 9. By default, each of these 10 P-Link program link scans are programmed to scan all 25 program scans from program 0 to program 24. The steps required to change any of these program scans will be covered in a later episode. So here's how to scan a P-Link scan of linked program scans. Long press VFO and dial to a P-Link scan. I'll just start with the first P-Link scan, P-Link 0, and tap VFO to start scanning. Rotate the dial if it stops on a received signal. And notice now it's scanning program 0 and then it automatically goes to the next linked program scan, which should be coming up soon. Program scan number one. And those are the only two linked program scans that are programmed for the P-Link scans. And tap VFO to stop. So as the scan continues upward through the frequencies, the program number will change from one linked program scan to the next. And again, as I said, there are only two program scans, program 0 and program 1. By default, all of the 10 P-Link scans are programmed to link these two, these two default program scans. This has been how to program and operate the ICOM ID-880H amateur radio transceiver. Thank you for watching, for liking, and for subscribing to my channel at youtube.com Milt Reynolds. I'm Milt Reynolds, KJ7PPX in Boise, Idaho, and I'll be clear on your final 73.